I would now show you another example on how to use foreground and fill to create the double exposure scene. Again, we will be using only two pieces of footage to create a double exposure effect. And this is not to restrain you in any way, but to show you that it can be as simple as making a sandwich. So I will open again two placeholders for scene 3 this time. And you can use any scene, any empty scene, uh, in placeholders folder. I will find foreground placeholder and fill placeholder. And now I will use a photo of a man in foreground. And this is in my foreground folder for me. I have downloaded this image here from unsplash.com, which is another really great resource for portrait photos. And I just drag this image into the place folder. So this is much bigger than our composition. And I will then scale it down so it fits inside. And now when we look at this edge here, you can see that it's cut off. Uh, it has uh, cut off part of its uh, back or shoulder. And I don't want to, uh, this to be seen. So I will just uh, adjust the position so that uh, it doesn't uh, show in the composition. Okay, now this time we will not use an alpha channel for uh, defining where fill is uh, shown through, uh, like we did in the previous example. But this time we will instead use luminance. And uh, this means that uh, either light or dark parts of this foreground image will define where the fill is uh, shown through and where the double exposure effect is happening. So if I want to use luminance, uh, then I uh, need to make the background white because I want to use the silhouette of this man as uh, a place where fill is shown. So I can add a curves effect to this image and then just take these lights up so the background gets white. And then I'll take the, take the dark parts down again until it resembles the original. Like this. So uh, I also want to get rid of these uh, transparent pixels around this image. And uh, for that I would just create a new white solid. Check it's white. OK. And drag this to background. Like this. And now we can go to fill placeholder. And uh, for this scene I will use another video clip from our video library. And uh, the video library looks like this. You will also get a link uh, to this library together with your purchase of double exposure generator. And uh, here you can preview the files and these are in 4K resolution. So you can then uh, download uh, these clips as you need them. And we'll be adding more videos to this constantly. And I have uh, chosen this video clip, not this one, this one, with a mountain river for this scene. I have only, uh, already downloaded this uh, from uh, this library and have imported it into the project. And you can do the same. Uh, it's in my fill folder for me, this one. And I will just drag this video into the placeholder. And now to be able to see how the double exposure effect looks like and to uh, make changes to the settings, I will go to back to the folder here in project panel and open composition scene base. And there is for every scene, there is a scene number base composition in the folder. So whichever scene you are making for making changes to the uh, settings, just open this scene three base composition. And here, when the first layer is selected, you can see all the controls on the effects controls panel. And right now there's not much happening. That's because we need to make some changes. I will solo this fill layer so we can see what happens when we make the changes. And here on the fill controls, uh, the first 
thing to change is the fill mode. By default, this is on alpha, but as we are using luminance in this case, I would change this. And right away, you can see that it uh, uses uh, now the light or white pixels to show the fill through, but we want this to be the other way around to use the dark pixels. So to do that, I will just activate this invert option here. And now the double exposure effect I was looking for is created. So right now only fill layer is uh, uh, shown and uh, we can make some more changes to this. I want it to be revealing starting from the bottom edge. So I'll change this angle here and then take back the coverage percentage a bit so it doesn't uh, fill the uh, top of the head and uh, the others are fine so um, I won't be using this dark fill light fill uh, optional um, settings for this scene and we can go straight to the foreground settings and I will make this visible also let's turn off fill for now so this is also really uh, easy if you uh, don't know how the changes affect or you get a bit lost then just solo the layers you can see how they look like and make the changes this way and then we'll go to the foreground settings and again let's uh, make it revealing from bottom and here also let's take back the coverage and we'll make the feather much bigger so it's softer like that Okay, and I don't need this full foreground option here either. This is uh, just uh, an additional option for background layer. You can put something inside this placeholder. And uh, these last two effects we won't be touching right now either. I'll show you these in later tutorials. So uh, let's turn on the fill layer too. And here's the double exposure effect. So this is the base and we'll be adding more uh, in the next tutorial using textures. But uh, this way you can see that you only need minimum of two layers, one for foreground, one for fill. And you can make your double exposure scene in a few minutes with this. So I'll show you a couple more um, things here. So let's say that uh, I don't like this positioning of the fill layer and uh, of course I can go back here and make some changes to position and then go back here and look how it looks like check uh, but this is a really cumbersome way of working so there's a much better way we can put a lock on this uh, composition window uh, by clicking on this um, lock icon here and now I can open another comp viewer from here and now when I go back to the fill placeholder and make the change I can see it updating here in the double exposure result so this is much more convenient and faster way of working and um, we can drag this around and see how it looks like uh, in another comp window so I'll show you one more thing here uh, usually the placeholders are meant for one file, at least I used to think so, uh, but uh, in this case uh, you're not limited to this. Uh, I really encourage you to composite more layers here inside mm, and I'll show you what, you me what I mean. For example, uh, when I look at this double exposure effect, uh, there's a funny uh, light spot on his nose and it doesn't look very natural. So a really easy way to uh, correct this is to go to the fill placeholder and find this uh, place in fill which creates this light effect. Now I will make a duplicate of this original video layer and use a pen tool to create a rough mask around this area. Then press MM and I'll solo this layer. Now let's make a feather and now I can add an exposure effect to make this much darker and let's unsolo the layer so we know how it looks like in the final 
effect like this. Now it looks much better, much more like the original uh, photo in foreground. And uh, I'll make another change here. So looking at this um, image or video actually, I would say that this, um, this part of uh, trees looks to be more in the distance than these trees on another bank of the river. And I want to make this effect even stronger. Uh, I can do this by adding a blur effect to part of this video. So to do that, I will duplicate this uh, original again and I'll solo this. And then using the pen tool again, I will just make a rough mask around. Of course, if you're using image inside, then it's as easy as that. But if you're using video and there is some camera movement, you would have to track or maybe animate. But you don't have to do it frame by frame. It's, uh, we have some great tools for that in After Effects. And uh, we'll be covering these also in tips and tricks tutorials. So uh, I will add a blur effect to this masked out part. I'll use Gaussian blur, but you can use any other blur too. Like this, and then I'll also, maybe a bit less, I'll also add a hue saturation effect to take down the saturation. Like this, yeah. I'll sound solo this and you can now see the effect here. Let's close up this window, like that. So that's just to show you that you can add more layers and uh, you can put here like flying birds or whatever effects you like. And uh, this is the best place to do this. Uh, then you can go over to the base composition and see how the effect turned out. So I'll show you what will be doing in the next tutorial. Uh, we'll be adding textures to this to finalize this uh, scene. And the final look will look like this. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.